Hi guys, my name is Kim Anderson. Illusionist has asked me to make a small tutorial on the French drop. Now, all of you know the French drop, I'm aware, but please stick around, you might get something out of this anyways. First off, the French drop was first published under the name Le Tourniquet, if I'm pronouncing this right, I don't speak French, in The Discovery of Witchcraft, The Discovery of Witchcraft by Reginald Scott and uh, later on by Professor Hoffman in Modern Magic. So you'll find many of these tutorials lying around on the internet and a lot of them teach the French drop something like this. Boop, boop. Now I wonder where the coin went. Let's talk a little bit about this because this is one of the oldest, oldest coin slides as far as I know. And most of us have probably witnessed this by a grandparent or an uncle who uh, dabbled a little bit in magic and and it's uh, for a kid who's never seen magic this can be really really uh, really really magical but this move has evolved over time i know there's so many different handlings of the french drop and so many small subtleties by different really awesome magicians this is basically my take on it of course heavily inspired by lots of other people but um, i hope you will enjoy it I use the French drop in a, a few different ways, but one of them is uh, using it as a, a display. I show the coin to a person on my left, and then I do the, the whole thing right here. So let's get into the basic movements of, uh, of what I just did. So many people, when they teach you the French drop, they will say, or many magic books, uh, I should say, will say, never place the coin in the display position in your head. And that is true. Uh, I remember, actually, that's true with a lot of palming and, and slights uh, and, uh, and fake transfers in, in magic. I, I remember a, a, a beloved magic book from my childhood um, that said that to do the classic palm, you should do this and say, so the coin is in my right hand and now I put it in my left. And I've already always laughed at that, uh, at that display of just pressing the coin into the classic palm. It's like really, really giving the, the secret away. And the same thing can be said about placing the coin at the fingertips like this in a French drop position. But I think it's okay to place the coin at the fingertips if you have a motivation for doing it. So uh, I will normally show the coin on my right to someone and say, look, so this is an American $1 coin, blah, 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 whatever pattern you want. And then as I turn to the people on the left, I'll just place it in my left hand fingertips. So I basically, I hold it between my, uh, my um, middle finger and my thumb and my index finger. But instead of holding it straight on, like uh, this, this is the, the classical French drop position, if you can call it this. So instead of holding it like this, I will angle the coin a bit. And there's a reason for that. Because in a moment, I'm gonna show the coin to the persons on my left. Uh, so I show the, coins, uh, the coin like this. And then as I move my hand back, I'd like to do the I'd like to do the move right in front of my body. So as I move the coin back, I do the move here. If I had the coin held in the original classic drop position that you'll see in uh, as an example in the uh, Modern Magic by Professor Hoffman, then you're in a really awkward position where you have to twist your whole arm and, and bend your ribs to to get in this position if you want to do it here. So by angling the coin, I can. I can have my arm at a more natural position when uh, when I want to do the when I want to do the the, the French drop right in front of me. Um, so I'll show the coin, maybe hand it out for examination on my right. Take it back, place it at my fingertips, and then I'll angle it as I show it to the people on the left. Then, as I move my hand back, I'll move my right hand in front of it, and this is where I execute the move. So if you've never seen the French drop before, then the secret behind the French drop is this movement. Okay, so what basically happens is I loosen the grip with my thumb. Okay, so I, I lift up my thumb like a fraction of an inch, just like this, and gravity does the rest. So in the original French drop where you held your hand in this position, this is an exposed view so you guys can see what's going on. But in the original French drop, the coin would fall all the way down into fingertip, uh, into uh, to finger palm of the uh, left hand or the hand that you're holding the coin in. So this would be the move. Um, in this case, I don't aim for the finger palm. And there's a reason for that, and I'll get into that in a second. Because if I angle the coin like this and hold it in front of me, now let's do the exposed view again. When I let go of my coin, 
the coin is more at a fingertip rest position. The reason that I don't want it in a finger palm at this moment, there are exceptions though, but, but uh, the reason that uh, normally I don't want it in a finger palm is because as soon as I go into an active palming uh, action of actually palming, like let's say a finger palm or a thumb palm or a classic palm, as soon as I go into a position like that, my hand looks unnatural to me at least. But if I can keep the coin at uh, in a fingertip rest position when my hand swings down to the side, then it's a more natural and more, more loose handling of the coin. And from there on, I can put it into whatever palm I feel like if I need it. So the coin goes from over here, I swing it in front of me, and my hands meet. So this is, think of this as not me getting into a French drop position, then my hand moves in, performs the French drop, and the dirty hand goes south. This is more of a, think of it as if the left hand was just to hand the coin to the left hand, okay? And that's also the reason why I do it in front of me is if I've shown the coin to the person or persons on the left, this would be a very, very unnatural movement if my hand went over here and performed the French drop, okay? So my left hand will naturally have to swing back towards the right for this to make any sense, uh, at least in how I would handle a coin when I do this. So my, my left hand swings back to here, my right hand covers, and this is the other important thing of the French drop. So my left hand does the thumb, uh, the thumb just uh, moves a fraction of an inch and, and lets go of the, of the coin. But the reason that this can fly by is because of my right hand. So the right hand covers the coin. So this is what the spectator sees. They see the face of the coin, or the tail side of the coin, but you know, the, 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 the side of the coin. They see a coin. Uh, so my right hand moves in front, my thumb moves behind, and I'll show this in exposed view again. So my thumb moves behind, and as soon as my fingers cover, I let go of the coin and then my thumb pretends to grab the coin. So this is what it would look like for real if I grabbed the coin. So this is the, the move, okay? So that's actually the real motion of taking a coin. So let's say I'd shown the coin here and I took it for real here. That would be what it looked like for real. You can practice this as well. This is a good way of, of learning how your natural movements look if you actually do the move correctly without doing any secret magical stuff. Uh, or any slights. So, so this would be how I would take the coin if I were to hold it, hold it by my fingertips and transfer it to the right hand. But in exposed view, what really happens is my fingers cover the coin and as just before my thumb grasps the coin, uh, my right thumb grasps the coin, uh, my left thumb releases the coin. And I pretend to take the coin. Now, because this coin falls into fingertip rest position, and here's another important note. The reason before that I said that I'm holding the coin between at its edges between my thumb and my middle finger of my left hand is so that my right, uh, my left uh, index finger can pivot the coin just a little bit. So it's not, the coin is not uh, held, how would you say, the coin is not uh, aligned with my fingers, uh, my thumb and my middle finger. It's more of a, at an angle like this, okay? At an angle, like, and this is another reason for this, is that when I let go of the coin, my index finger gives cover. This isn't necessary, but but to me, it, it, it makes it feel more safe to, to perform the, the French drop. So my finger adds a little bit more cover. If let's say um, I, I've seen other people do the, the French drop like this, this can also look fantastic. But if you do that, the coin will fall uh, further uh, down into the, the finger palm, depending on the angle of the hand, of course. But if I hold it on my middle finger, this might just be me uh, obsessing over this, but if I hold the coin with my middle finger and my thumb, the coin will fall a shorter distance and land in my uh, ready to, for my fingertip rest uh, position. Okay, so, but.
I lost track of where I was at. Uh, but my thumb goes over. I pretend to take the coin. And now this is important, okay? Don't do this. A lot of people, just like when they put the coin in, in finger palm immediately, let, let's say you did a, did a French drop like, uh, like this, a lot of people, they turn over the hand, the left hand, hiding the coin secretly immediately, uh, probably because they feel dirty or guilty about it. I, uh, I've also done this uh, many, many times in my life, uh, especially starting out with coin magic, because it's... <laughs> It's a little bit frightening because you're basically, you're lying to people. You're saying, so I'll take the coin in my right hand and oh, my ears are getting red because because I'm secretly retaining the coin in my left hand and I'm, I'm, I have to act. I have to, oh, this feels like a real coin in my right hand. And, and that can be, that could be a little too much for people knowing, at least when you start out doing magic, uh, that, that you're hiding something secretly in the other hand. But no need to run, you're not being chased, okay? I didn't come up with that wonderful sentence, but uh, I like to use it because it's true. If you do this right, and, and if you, uh, like I say, if you show the coin, transfer it to the other hand, if you do this right, then no one at this moment will suspect this coin of being in the other hand. In a second they might, but we'll get to that in a second, and I'll tell you how you can, can avoid that or, or, or get out of that easier. So, the right hand pretends to take the coin. The coin falls into fingertip. Uh, rest this is what I was about to say before, actually, before I completely lost where I was at. So when you, when you perform the French drop, as I said, don't immediately turn your hand over, or in this case, don't immediately swing your hand down by your side. Just for a fraction of a second, let this empty space be visual. Okay, visible, sorry. This is what sells the French drop, in my opinion. This moment of the coin, just don't uh, think about the actions of this hand right now, but this moment, this empty space where the coin was a second ago, people see a coin, now the coin is gone. Of course, it's in the other hand. Why else would the magician take the coin? This is not something where you're supposed to convince people that you're doing stuff. In your head, right now, you're showing a coin to people on your left, you're taking it with your right hand. That's it. This is not a magic trick. The magic trick comes when you somehow magically vanish the coin. This is merely a transportation of a coin from one hand to the other, okay? Nothing to run from. But you want to show this empty gap for a second. I want to just like for a fraction of a second, let's see if we can do this in real time. Show the coin over here. Do this, okay, so just small, 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 split second, this empty space is visible before the hand dives down to your side. And this is, uh, uh, I remember David Williamson talking about this, if you're palming, be it coins, cards, whatever, when your hand swings down by your side, relax, just let it swing, let it swing back and forth a couple of times. I think he says, let it, let it bounce, like so the arm goes. And uh, of course, he's not watching this, but if you're watching this, David, please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, so as soon as, as people have seen this empty space, empty uh, uh, area where the coin was a second ago, now believing that it's in the, in the right hand, your left hand will swing down, coin at, and I've talked about the fingertip rest position, if uh, someone doesn't know what the fingertip rest position is. It's basically just having, having the coin lying I'll show this in a, in a close-up as well. Having the coin lie on your fingertips. This is, it's not an active palm in any way. It's, a, it's just a, a very, very relaxed, relaxed state of, a, of just having the coin lie on your fingers. So, hand swings down by your side. All the focus is on the right hand. Before we go to, go to the right hand and the, the uh, imminent vanish of the coin, I'll talk a little bit about the left hand down by your side. Okay, I'll try to move it up here so you can see it. What you want to do is, and, and this is very important, I think, if you're turned head on towards the spectator here, then there's a chance of you flashing the coin to him and her and who else might be on your right side because your hand is open down by your side. This is really hard showing, so I'll, I'll try to do it up here. So as soon as my, my hand swings down, coin is at fingertip rest position, there's several things you can do. You can uh, pinch your thumb and your index finger together, uh, actually uh, the sides of the fingers. So place the thumb on your fingers. This happens down by your side. This will uh, uh, close the gap between your fingers. Then you can also twist at your wrist. 
Okay, twist at your wrist, aiming uh, more of the back of the hand towards the spectator. And what I like to do, because uh, to me this seems like a fluid, uh, natural uh, motion when I do the, the French drop. So I've shown the coin over here, shown the coin to the spectators over here, performed the French drop, and now I turn my body slightly and focus all my attention here. And by doing that, my uh, left uh, shoulder comes in front of me, not, not completely in front of me, but, but just, just slightly. I, I don't move my feet, I just turn up the hip, okay? So French drop, turn up the hip, look at my hand over here. So all focus is here, and then I do whatever. I mean, I blow on my hand, coin is gone, I rub the coin into nothingness, whatever. But but the slight, the slight movement of, uh, of my hip and my upper body helps a lot with hiding the coin. So it's completely obscured from the people on my left and it's, uh, it's more and more uh, hidden for, from the people uh, on my right and right in front of me. Uh, so this is just a thing to remember, you can, you can use your body to, to hide uh, palmed uh, objects and, and stuff like that, because that sounded very smart saying stuff like that. I can, I can, I should write that down. So let's get into the vanish of the coin. There's so many ways of doing this. This uh, is all up to, to how you like to perform and your way of acting and, and presenting your magic when you perform. But let's say you, you, do the, you do the French drop. You pretend to have a coin. I've seen so many people do, do different variations on this. Um, if, if you if you really want to get into this, get uh, Benjamin Earl's Real Coin Magic. I'm pretty sure it's called that. A DVD. He talks a lot about uh, basically how to to act that you have a coin in your hand, act out that you have a coin in your hand, and it's it's a masterclass in in pretending. It's a uh, yeah. Check. You should get that no matter what. But I think the important thing here is is focus. Okay. Because if, if you look at your left hand that's secretly hiding a coin and going, ah, oh, I don't hope people will see that coin, then, then no one will believe that the coin is in this hand. So, so if, if you put all your attention on your right hand and maybe look them in the eye back at your right hand, then people will focus on your right hand. Just forget the left hand swinging by your side, okay? Um, now, as I said, many ways of doing this. There's the classic rub, there's the blow, there's the blow and rub. Okay. Now you're at the situation where you've vanished the coin. You've just taken the coin, somehow magically vanished it. No matter how good of a magician you are, people will suspect the left hand in a second if you don't know how to get out of this. One way of, uh, of uh, eliminating that possibility that it could be in your left hand is if you use the left hand for something else. I didn't come up with this at all. It's an it's a age-old magical principle. Um, I think I've seen Vernon talk about it and Michael Lamar and Williams and the, um, using a magic wand, basically. Don't worry if you're not the kind of magician that uses a magic wand. You can use whatever, use a pen, something like that. Uh, let's say you have a pen lying on the table. Uh, I'll put it in my pocket for now. But uh, you do the French drop. Okay. And now, just before you let the coin vanish, you take out the pen, secretly holding the coin in your finger palm. Now, because you're holding a pen in your hand, and showing it seemingly empty here by using the Ramsey subtlety. This is a very, very awesome, awesome move to do. Uh, the, the Ramsey subtlety is, well, basically the coin in finger palm position. Uh, but if you angle it right, you can show most of your palm empty. Now, this doesn't look fair for that long, but, but if you're holding something else in your hand, like let's say you picked up a pen or a table knife or whatever, focus your attention on your hand, tap the hand, do a magical wave, something like that Harry Potter approves, by the way, then, then you can get away with this. Because now people have seen you use your left hand for something else than holding a coin. So thereby, without thinking about it, they know that this hand is empty. Uh, now the right hand is empty and you're done. So this is a, a convincer of getting rid of the coin, uh, oh, getting rid of the suspicion of the coin being in the left hand. So uh, just something to, uh, to play around with. So just a quick note at the end, if, if you don't feel like taking the coin and placing it at your fingertips of the other hand, then uh, another way of doing this is holding the coin at your fingertips. I like using this to get into the display position. Uh, so I basically just do this and show the coin, 
Okay, and this might seem like a lot of movement to, to get into a French drop position when you can actually put it here. I don't know, to me this just seems really nice, clean and flashy. Basically what I do is I hold the coin uh, by the, the, the edge with my uh, thumb and index finger and uh, the middle finger as well. And then at this point, I let gravity tip the coin backwards. I let the coin slide or my thumb slide up against the coin and I catch it in the same position that I would normally have put it in. So in between my uh, my middle thumb and index finger, like this. And as soon as I've caught it and I show it, I take my index finger and I pull down on the edge of the coin. So I swivel the coin and I actually, I swivel it a whole rotation. So it looks like, looks like this, almost a whole rotation, Whoop. like this. So I get into the position there's not a lot of, of reasoning for doing this, except that I think it looks cool and that's how I am. Uh, so I, not cool, but a guy that thinks this looks cool. So, uh, so by doing this, and there's another small reason for it. This will make the coin catch the light in most situations, okay? So even if people are sitting further away at a table, let's say I'm doing table hopping uh, at an event. Uh, if, I, if I take the coin from here and I hold it up like this and uh, swivel the coin around uh, on its axis, then this will make the coin catch the light, make it flash, and people will see it a little bit more from farther away. So this is just a, a nice way of getting into it. Uh, another way of getting into the position is uh, holding the coin just with your thumb and your index finger, and then pressing the coin with your thumb over the outer joint of your index finger like this, and then grabbing the coin with your middle finger and your thumb, sorry, your index finger like this, okay? So again, looks like this. I'm not sure why I'm doing a tutorial on how to get the coin into the grip, but play around with this. It, it's fun and it's uh, it's nice. This is also one of the moves that are really, really cool to, to be able to do with both right and left hand, the whole uh, French drop and, and stuff like that, because depending on the given situation, you might need to be able to, to switch hands when performing stuff like this. So lastly, pro tip, if you really wanna do something with your coin magic and, uh, and practice your different slights and skills and get better at it, then uh, try taking the coin to the shower or the coins to the shower. And this is, trust me, this is not a karate kid uh, wax on, wax off uh, thing. This is, uh, this is actually something I do and I play around with this is, uh, well, basically it's because I have three kids and I, I don't have time to practice magic. So I have to, to practice wherever I can. So try bringing your coins into the shower. If you can do your different slides, so start out tomorrow with the, with the French drop. If you can do that in the shower with wet hands and water pouring down on your hands, then you're, you're like, you're way ahead of the curve and you can you can do this in practically any situation. It might sound stupid, but I promise you, you'll thank me later on. Again, thank you, Timmy, for uh, for having me. This uh, this is just my small take on the, on the French drop. I hope all of you guys will have fun with it. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. My, uh, my handle is uh, Kim Anderson with the number five instead of an S and an E instead of an O, uh, I think we'll just put it here so you guys can see it. I'll respond to as much as I can and feel free to ask no stupid questions at all. I'll just, uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to, to help. And if you're interested in seeing more of the stuff I do, I've put out Silver Edge 1 and Silver Edge 2 with Illusionist. That's basically my take on magnetic coins and uh, how you can do really, really mind boggling and visual magic with uh, a special set of gimmicked magnetic coins. I, uh, yeah, please feel free, have a look if you want to, and uh, see you guys. My name's Kim Anderson.